Hi, Nathan Ritter from CardioGage.com. There's a lot of interest in vitamin K2 and heart health out there right now with questions and comments on the channel. You can check out my video intro to vitamin K2. For basic information about the vitamin, this video is about vitamin K2 and blood vessels and the heart. The heart community became interested in vitamin K2 when it was discovered that this vitamin controlled blood vessel calcification in mice. Calcification causes the blood vessels to be stiff and it makes the blood pressure higher and makes the heart work harder. Initial human study of vitamin K2 in the heart was observational, meaning scientists looked to see what happened with people with various levels of vitamin K2 intake. This is as opposed to being directly experimental where people are given vitamin K2 to see what happens. The first big K2 study was the Rotterdam study. And it's critical to understand the results of this study to understand the K2 story. Let's take a look at it. The Rotterdam study was done in the Netherlands, where in general they do a better job studying nutrition than we do in the US. They looked at what factors, foods, habits, exercise patterns, contributed to causing or preventing diseases. They studied 15,000 Dutch people ages 55 and over. One of the many nutritional items they looked at was vitamin K2, also known as menaquinone. Here are some important points about the study. The scientists guessed how much vitamin K2 people consumed based on what they ate. In the Dutch diet, vitamin K2 comes from cheese mostly, also meat, liver, eggs, and sauerkraut, and other dairy. They found that people with high K2 intake had a 1.6% chance of dying each year, whereas those with low vitamin K2 intake had a higher 2.3% chance of dying each year. That's a big difference. They also found the risk of getting heart disease was about 0.5% per year with high K2 and 0.76% per year for low K2. So the scientists discovered an association between high vitamin K2 intake and lower chance of death. It's important to understand that they did not prove with this study that people should take vitamin K2 to prevent death or heart disease. That would require a study where some people are given vitamin K2 and others are given placebo or, or a sugar pill and the risk of death and heart disease were compared between those two groups. The Rotterdam study led to several other studies of vitamin K2 and heart health. This is the one I consider to be the most important at this point. Vitamin K2 supplementation in the form of MK7 improves arterial stiffness in postmenopausal women. This was published in 2015. They studied 244 women for three years. Half got 180 micrograms per day of vitamin K2 in the form of MK7. Half got placebo. Women who got MK7 had a decrease in arterial stiffness. This is a good thing because stiff arteries cause high blood pressure and increase how hard the heart works. Another good study is effect of vitamin K2 on progression of atherosclerosis and vascular calcification in non-dialyzed chronic kidney disease patients. This is great because people with kidney disease have a lot of trouble with blood vessel calcification. They studied 42 patients for 270 days. Half got 90 micrograms per day of MK7 and vitamin D, and half got just vitamin D. The coronary calcium score increased 58 points in those who got K2 and increased 74 points in those who did not. So there was less of an increase in calcification in the people who got the vitamin K2, which is a good thing. A coronary calcium score is a measure of how much calcium is in people's coronary arteries and you can check out my video about this topic here. This study supports the idea that taking vitamin K2 in the form of MK7 leads to better blood vessel health. The most exciting trial going on in this space right now is this one. MK7 supplementation to reduce vascular calcification in patients with coronary artery disease, the VitaCAC trial. The authors are looking at 360 micrograms per day of vitamin K2 as MK7 over two years in people with coronary artery calcium. If MK7 works to decrease coronary artery calcium scores, watch out, there's going to be a vitamin K2 craze. 
So how do I use K2 in my practice? When I recommend it, I use a dose of 200 micrograms per day of MK7. That costs about 30 cents per day. I consider it in people who have severe coronary artery disease and severe vessel calcification. There are no good follow-up tests that you can use to decide if the K2 is working, so there's no testing after starting it. Um, and I'm really I'm waiting for more studies and tests to come out before recommending it to all of my patients. That's it for vitamin K2 and heart health. Please put comments and questions down below. If you know about any studies that are going on that are exciting, please uh, post them in the comment section. Hit like and subscribe. It helps to get the feedback. See you next time.